Reality was nice enough to send over their new K1C, along with a filament dryer and some filament to test it out with, seeing that this is supposed to be able to print carbon fiber filled materials right out of the box. And speaking of the box, there is instructions as soon as you open it of how to get this thing out of it, which I find to be kind of funny. And it was packed pretty well, and as you can see, there's still packing materials in it. And it does have the rest of the parts for this machine all packed inside as well. And this whole printer is pretty much just an upgraded version of their K1. And as I'm unpacking this, I found one upgrade already. And that's the front door actually having tension on it. So it's not going to wildly swing open and shatter seeing that this is actually a piece of glass, oh, like cool. some of us found out the hard way. Okay. This box was inside the machine itself, and it has everything in it that you need to get this machine all set up and maintained. Along with that, it comes with a small roll of filament, so you can get up and running right away. And the touchscreen for the machine is in here as well, which needs to be installed. But this is pretty straightforward and doesn't require any tools. You just plug in the ribbon cable in the back and then just kind of slide it in place. Another upgrade that came with this machine is a charcoal filter, which goes right here on the back of the machine. And this is meant to help filter some of the particles that come off of the higher temperature materials. And it just kind of pressure fits in place. But with that being said, I really don't see this filter really doing that much. And you'd be much better off setting up a ventilation setup with this. It also comes with a very basic spool holder that goes on the back of the machine, which I'm not the biggest fan of having it mounted there, but I'll be showing you a fix for this later in the video. And for now, we're just going to load it up like this. And of course, it will work like this with no problems. And you just need to feed the filament up through the filament runout sensor and all the way to the print head. I'm actually kind of surprised they have a filament runout sensor here and not on the print head itself. And someone actually designed one that you can just print and move this to the print head, which is pretty nice. But anyways, before plugging your printer in or turning it on, make sure that you switch this to the right voltage and seeing that I'm in the US, it's going to be 115. And this does come with a setup guide, so if you are getting one of these, make sure you go through this to make sure everything's set up properly. But I do think things are pretty much straightforward. If we take a look on the inside of the machine, you can see that it has a nice part cooling fan on the side, along with a small camera already installed. And at first glance, the print head looks almost exactly the same as the K1, with just a little bit of a different color shroud. And the build plate looks almost exactly the same as the K1 besides one new feature, which is this little silicone wipe area on the back. But anyways, let's get this thing completely set up, and then I'll do some prints and do a direct comparison between this and the original K1. And for the most part, the setup on this is pretty much automated, and it's going to go through and do its bed leveling and do all of its calibration setups, which takes about 15 minutes to go through. And with that all done, I have full control over the printer now, so I'm going to just print a basic benchy to make sure everything is working properly. And this file, along with some others, are already on the printer, and this should only take about 16 minutes to finish. And I didn't have to do any other setup, I just push print, and it's printing. You also get to see a view from the camera that's on board the machine. And the weird striping you're seeing on the screen right now is due to my overhead lights. They do this to some cameras, so this happens to be one of them. And here's the finished Benchy, which looks fine. A little hard to pick up the white color on camera, but overall it's a successful print with just about no effort from me. And now that I know the printer is working properly, I can print something a bit more useful that will fix our spool holder problem. And this file actually came on the machine itself, so it's nice to see that they've been listening to the community and gave them an option if they wanted to use it. And it definitely came out looking pretty clean with just a little bit of stringing going on, but overall not really a problem. And this is going to mount right here on the side using these three bolt holes, along with some extra bolts that are a bit longer that came with the printer. And the spool holder that comes with it just screws in place. And then the spool just goes on like normal, and it still runs up the back of the printer. And you can still use the filament runout sensor. And here's a look at it from the front, and it's definitely a lot easier to deal with the filament situation on this now. But anyways, let's check the two printers out side by side. Like I pointed out before, the door on the K1 will just freely swing with no resistance. And the K1C has resistance and will stop wherever you let go of it. And if we take a look on the inside of the K1, the rear exhaust fan is just open and the K1C has a screen over it along with that charcoal filter I showed you earlier. The drag chain on the K1 is a bit shorter, and this causes it to hit the inside of the printer sometimes when printing. And it looks like they raised it up a little bit on the K1C, so it clears everything. The K1 also comes with a brass nozzle, which works fine for most things, but not for filled materials or anything that's abrasive. And when it comes to the K1C, it has a wear-resistant nozzle, so you can print just about anything on this, without worrying about wearing it out. Also, to my understanding, but I could be completely wrong, the K1 doesn't come with a camera, but you can buy one separately that is just plug and play. And as you saw earlier, the k one C does come with one already installed. So there are definitely a few minor upgrades that make the K1C a bit better than the K1. And as of recording this video, the K1 is about $500. 
And if you look at the K1C right now, it's about $60 more at $560 which I'm pretty sure is around the same price as it would be to buy all the upgrades for your original K1. So in my opinion, if you're going to be getting one, the K1C is the one to go with. And if you already have a K1, you can just upgrade it to your needs. But anyways, let's talk about the filament dryer now, which will definitely come in really handy when printing materials that like to soak up water. And this will fit up to one kilogram spools. Also, this dryer doesn't come with the printer, it is sold separately. And it's a universal setup, so you can use it with just about any printer. And aesthetically, it looks pretty nice as well, if that's something that's important to you. And the controls on this are on the front and if you push right here it'll turn it on and you can see that it's actually a touchscreen and you can scroll through different settings and change your temperatures or use some presets along with different times so it's very easy to use well, at least when it comes to setting up your times and temperatures but getting it to work with the machine itself is a little awkward because the filament comes out of the top of the heater and how tall this is I have to disconnect the filament runout sensor and run it directly into the printer that also means you're not going to be able to use the filament runout detector so if you run out of filament you won't know. And that's why I mentioned that filament runout sensor in the beginning of this video that relocates it onto the print head itself so this won't be a problem. Another nice upgrade that you can do for this printer or just about any of the Creality printers now are these build plate alignment stops that I made. So you can use any build plate on them instead of using just the Creality branded ones. They print out pretty quick with no supports and they're held in using the same screws that you take out on the back of the build plate. So you can still use the stock build plate or switch it out to whatever you want. But anyways let's get some more printing done and I'm going to use some of the carbon fiber filled PLA that they sent with this and I printed this replacement battery cover and as you can see it looks like it came out pretty nice but the more important part is if it actually fits the thing it's made for which is an original Game Boy and it is a little snug but it does fit and clips into place but unfortunately it's a little too snug at the clip where I can't get it out with my fingernails but I was able to get it out using a knife so I'd call this print passable but not perfect. I also printed this holder or display for the Game Boy, which came out looking pretty good as well. The only real problem I could see with it is on the bottom, it could be a little bit closer to the build plate. But overall, as you can see, these are totally usable and look pretty good with the Game Boy as well. And with that all done, I wanted to print something a bit bigger. So I made an entire Game Boy Advance SP display that can hold games as well using the same material. And that came out looking pretty good in this matte carbon fiber texture. And all of the games are able to fit into the slots along with the SP being able to fit onto its stand so I'd call this pretty much a perfect print but I wanted to print a couple more things in this material just to see how it would do and this next holder is a bit thinner and you can see some flaws in it but overall still pretty good and of course it fits the Game Boy Advance into it with no problem and this next print basically needs to be perfect because we're going to be sliding a handheld into this and making it a lot more comfortable seeing that the Game Boy Micro is a little cramped when using it and here it is with the supports removed and I think it looks pretty good and it feels smooth enough in the hands as well but we need to see if the the Game Boy Micro will actually fit in this. And it does, and it fits pretty snugly, which is a good thing. And this definitely makes using this a lot more comfortable, but definitely not as pocketable as it was before. But carbon fiber filled PLA isn't the hardest thing in the world to print. So let's try out some ASA and see how that works out. And if you didn't know, ASA likes to warp when it cools down too quick. So with this being a fully enclosed printer, it should keep everything nice and warm and minimize warping, which is kind of important, especially when you're making durable parts, you want them to actually fit. And this part that I'm making is actually Actually a replacement back piece for this PSP Go and it's going to allow me to remove this really small battery for a much bigger one along with being able to add extra storage to this and here's the finished part and we had a little bit of a problem it did warp and you can see it right here in this corner and if I hold it a certain way you can see how much that it's bowing so as you can see even with a fully enclosed printer you still can run into warping problems but there are some easy ways to fix them like adding a brim and it's just one layer of material that it lays down extra so it has something to grab onto and for the most part just kind of pops off of the print when you take it off and this one came out with absolutely no warping whatsoever and this fits perfectly on the PSP Go with no weird gaps or anything like that I just need to find some longer screws to actually mount it to it along with finding the bigger battery that I want to put in here and let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing me fully rebuild and modify this PSP all right so my overall thoughts on this this printer is really easy to get set up right out of the box and just kind of works and as you saw it was able to handle whatever I threw at it using pretty much all default settings you can connect to this over Wi-Fi and it is running the clipper firmware but at the moment, I don't have any working Wi-Fi in my shop. So for all the prints in this video, I just used the included USB drive. And I would definitely suggest this printer to anyone looking for one. And it definitely came a long way from the original launch of the K1, which had some problems. And if you want to see the video on the original K1, there should be a link on the screen now. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.